Dude, WTF. Oh, man. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Dude, what the fuck? What the fuck, man? What the fuck? Come on, man. Dude, what dude, the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Come on, man. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck, man? Get in here. What the fuck? Holy shit, what the fuck? WTF, man. Dude, what the fuck? 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 Oh my god. What the fuck? Well, welcome to the Monday edition of WTF. I'm Joe Joseph. We've got Jules. We've got Ken. And Popeye will show up some point in time today. WTF to that. Anyway, guys... How's things going? Great. That's wonderful. Oh. Great. Great right, for Monday. Ken, Ken you're, I, could, I could just feel the energy right now coming from you, Ken. This oh, is going to yeah. be a good night. I can feel it. Speaking oh, of WTF, yeah. I got a WTF. I got to throw it out to Matt Drudge. Matt Drudge, what the hell are you thinking, man? Newt on top? Really? Are you serious? Come on. It's the, the way Matt likes it. With nude Come on top. On. Nude on top. Man, you couldn't pick somebody else. Like Ron Paul. I mean, hell, man, they gave him a whopping 89 seconds on this uh, on this last debate. WTF to that. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. He's the only consistent guy that, that did anything. And last I remember, uh, Newt was a, he was a bad, he was a naughty boy. He was a naughty boy that got, uh, you know, I, didn't he have to step down from the speakership? Or he lost. I can't remember exactly what it was, but but I know he was a, he was a bad bad boy, and he's a neocon to boot. So I, I have a I have a serious problem with this, you know. Herman Cain first, now Newt Gingrich, and and folks, the WTF to to this? Could you imagine a president with Newt as no. the first name? I, 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 do, do you remember, and, Joe, that he called his whole little thing back in the 90s when they broke away from the government, when they did their little government shutdown thing? He yes, called his whole yes. thing the Newt World Order. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. I, I just, I'm sick. I'm sick to death. I can't take it. Newt Gingrich leading the poll. Wow. Okay. Probably smoking a pole is what he's really doing, along with every other freaking elitist that uh, gets off on little boys and homosexuality. That will change just, very shortly. I'm just saying. Just wait a week. Just saying. What the, what the hell to that? WTH or F or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> how about, how about WTF with the Citadel, Joe? WTF. Remember I said the other day you watch more more schools are going to come out now with the, the whole, oh, well, yeah. we had abuse at our school. Now the Citadel. Oh, There's a giant queer gangbang going on all over the place, whether it be the, the Citadel or uh, hell. I mean, there's there's footage, dudes, of this this like extravaganza out in San Francisco where they're doing like live gay sex acts in the street in the street like a parade like a freaking festival you know where you got like people with their freaking uh their you know their wieners tied up and and you know getting whipped with the cat of nine tails that's what this country's coming to man are you kidding me i don't know jules come on help me out it's here it's a destruction of morals it's not really it's not really uh, about homosexuality, that's they, no. they use that as an excuse, like oh, you're 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 anti-gay rights or anything like. No, what it is is they're using uh, that amongst uh, you know ma- amongst other things like making girls promiscuous and stuff to of bring course. down uh, the the society and bring about the fall of society. So you can tell where society is, like uh, on a level with humanity and everything, by how yeah. the people act and look how. We acted 200 years ago as a society compared to what we do now. We are going down the hill. We're not going up. We're going down. Well, you know, I'll tell you, focusing on sex 
and buying things. I mean, those are all egocentric. And by being egocentric, we're not worrying about each other. We're not worrying what's going on around us. We're worrying about ourselves. So that really is kind of where where we're going down the tubes. You know, and you it's want because to- of all these external influences. You're right. You're right. You want me to you want me to throw something out there that's really going to give you a WTF? I'll, I'll play devil's advocate for a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna play my good buddy Mike Powers for a second. <laughs> but uh, here here for, first they we know that they use that to divide, and we know they use race to divide. But could it be that the annihilation or the reduction of the um, Anglo American uh, that 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 sector of the population. If you notice, that population is dwindling. It's going down. How many? Um, I, I wonder if there's a statistic out there of gay white people to gay black people or gay Hispanic people. Are there more of one to the other? And does that directly affect uh, population of either race? And furthermore. Could that be Agenda 21? Ooh. Well, they put hormones in so. the water. I'm, yeah, not saying think- that, I'm not saying that people aren't born gay. I mean, that, that, that anybody that argues that, you know, you choose to be gay is an idiot. But um, I, I think that, especially when children are young or if they're in the womb and they're being um, – exposed to some of the, the these hormones maybe that's why you have kids that maybe they, they feel they're one way but they're i'm trapped in a you know i'm a boy trapped in a girl's body or something maybe that would you know with all the i'm not saying this is the reason i'm just saying perhaps this could explain why there's such a rise in that because of all the hormones and everything that women are exposed to when the, when the child's being born you know during the the nine months in the womb you know, not everybody not everybody is great to their kids. Who was telling me the other day that they they know someone that um, she was she's pregnant. I forget who this was. She's pregnant and she waited too long uh, before you know to decide if she was going to keep the baby or not. And now she decided, well, I I don't want to keep the baby. And now she has no choice. She has to keep it. And the whole time she's been smoking and drinking while she's been pregnant. So that kid is and doing hardcore drugs. So that kid is done. That kid yeah, is done. It, it doesn't even have a chance coming out of the womb. So, besides the stuff that you know, you what you know, a, 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 a dumb mother or a bad you know pregnant woman, whatever you want to call them, would give the child or intake herself, therefore affecting the child. What about the stuff that you don't know? Or an uneducated mother doesn't you know? Don't drink the fluoride. God knows what that stuff does. God knows yeah. what all these you know whatever aluminum it, and barium and shit like that. I mean, yeah, you're right. Exactly. So no one, I mean, I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to say that, you know, that's what, that's creating gay people because that'd be an ignorant statement. I'm just saying, (laughs) who knows? I'm sorry. What a good remark for a Monday night. Well, I mean, it is, it would be an an idiotic statement to say that, you know, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I wonder if some of the, the effects where you're seeing that boys are more feminine nowadays and, and I mean, it already there's already a direct correlation with the BPA and the plastics and everything else. So right from birth, these kids nowadays are getting hit with this stuff. By the time they're 15, 16 years old, no wonder things people or kids are so screwed up. Look at girls. Why do you think well, girls you know develop? Else, though, dude, you know you know the whole onset of uh, soy milk. There's studies that show that soy milk. Uh, if boys drink, young boys drink a lot of soy milk or any soy product, it actually mimics estrogen. It and, does. And yeah, and I mean, that has some really detrimental side effects to their development, you know? You know, the you thing know, is, and, though, Including feminization. I think across the board, all of our hormones are getting messed up. Look at the frogs. And you see the frogs are changing sexes. And that was already a couple of years ago. They were finding effeminated male frogs, and they said it was from all the hormones from the birth control pills that were ending up in the waterways. I mean, here, the hormones they're putting in the chicken and the beef, the, the BPA that's in the baby bottles. I mean, I don't know. Did that ever get taken out of the baby bottles? It's in your cans, inside all cans of food. You know, I think it's messing up everybody's well, That's what I'm hormones. saying. Right from and the start. At some point, well, right. And at some point, it's going to affect everybody's fertility. And isn't that the point, right? So we can't reproduce. Well, yeah, that's, you, that's where it, it all dovetails 
dovetails back to this whole depopulation agenda. Right. You know, not only are they killing people off with diseases and war and everything else, and you know, crap in the food, but they're also trying to make us sterile so we can't keep reproducing. Hey. I was going to say, the one point I'd like to make is that I have lots of gay friends, and I love gay people. Well, so, there's nothing wrong with somebody just there because... There is nothing wrong with I mean, anybody that, has, anybody that thinks just because someone's gay, they're evil, that's... that's <laughs> what's hard. It's like that. That's right. Well, folks, don't go away. It's our first break, and I'm talking to you like a bad 70s game show host. <laughs> just to go along with this music. So sit tight, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening okay. to WTF here on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Okay, quick quick thought. Here we go. Uh, and I, I want an instant response to this. Jules, first song that came to mind when you heard that. Oh, it was something by Karen Carpenter. That's exactly what I thought. Two <laughs> birds suddenly appear. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Bringing back flashbacks from my childhood. But I Joe, like the music. Joe, Joe I like got brought back to uh, his high school prom when he got dumped. <laughs> <sighs> I'll tell you, man, those were the days. It, it brought you back, didn't it? It did, but unfortunately, that was about, oh, 20 years before my time. <laughs> I graduated I, in 1993. Oh, you guys are youngsters. Yeah, Jeez, puppies. I know you graduated. Yeah, 19- graduating in '93 makes you really young, considering there's people running around with guns in the military that you know were born in like the '90s. So well, yeah, exactly That's right, dude. Scary. They were like born in '93. When people tell me, man, I was born in like you know like 1997, I'm like, oh my god, I was already out of high school. <laughs> shoot, me. shoot me already. '97, <laughs> I couldn't remember high school. <laughs> well, I mean, Ken. You went to school in like the 1850s, so I don't expect you to remember it. (laughs) Here we go. Okay, well, if that's the case, right? If that's the case, and and Ken, you went to high school in the 1850s, then you should be able to answer some of these questions that I have. And this, folks... Oh, are you going to break out the 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 eighth grade exam. The eighth grade exam? Dude, I (laughs) bet you none of us could pass that thing right now. I know Probably I couldn't not. do it. I couldn't do it. But I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. They for gave it, okay? that they gave that eighth grade exam to college kids, and they couldn't pass it either. Exactly. Name the parts of speech and define those that have no modifications. Pencil WTF. Really? <laughs> uh, the uh, the uh, let's see. Define case. Illustrate each case. What? Back in the 1800s, the educational system was probably a thousand times better than what we have today. That people don't realize that, Ken. Yeah, well, we, we got away from teaching and got away, got into throwing money at it. Well, that's because the government put its hands involved into, into teaching. And then as soon as the government, I, I love when people are like, Ron Paul's a schmuck because he, should, he wants to get rid of the Department of Education. Deregulation of such industries has led to our problems. But while I do agree that deregulating certain things did lead to problems, the Department of Education uh, actually became mu- – or, or education became much worse when the Department of Education was created and when the government took over. Well, yeah, you, know, it, you know why they took over is because they didn't, want, they didn't want some guy out in the middle of Nebraska or um, North or South Dakota or Colorado being smarter than some schmuck who came from Penn State. Well, no. The, well, Rockefeller, 
the Rockefeller, and then it's not just David Rockefeller. It's the yeah, whole family. look up the look up Ed- Foundation controls the Department of Education, and they they have like the the NJ or whatever the, whatever it is. All those um, the Guggenheim Foundation, think, all yeah. the yeah. different all foundations. Endowment. I can't even remember all the names, but they all fund through department the the Department of Education. And what did Rockefeller say? What's he quoted as saying in his biography? Here's a WTF. When you like hear he, this, I don't want a nation of thinkers. I want a nation of workers. Yes, worker bees. And, <laughs> and look at what we have now. I mean, Jules, you have children. Yeah. What, what would you categorize the school system today as opposed to when you were a child? I mean, how different is it? I mean, you can see the juxtaposition between the two. And I'm not saying it was great when we were kids. But, I mean, just the drastic difference from then till now. What do you see with your kids? Yeah, I mean, right now, they're just teaching them to learn to the state standards. You know, learn how to take the multiple test, uh, multiple exactly. choice exam. And they're not teaching them how to think independently. I mean, at least when I was in school in the 80s, they taught us to think outside the box. You know, read this and come up with your own interpretation. And everyone had their own interpretation of, you know, I, I was really into literature. That's what I did. And, I mean creative writing English classes. I mean, I don't even know if they do that anymore. You know, I saw an article not too long ago where there were some schools that they were looking at getting rid of teaching handwriting. They want to teach mm-hmm. them keyboarding skills, not handwriting. And right, like cursive, cursive gone. they're going to get rid of cursive, yep. They're getting, rid of, they're getting rid of that? books now, too. All yeah. the books, they're putting everything on. Well, the, the students use iPads. It's much better for them. Yeah, and now you yeah. can also change the words that are in books electronically because right. it's much harder to screw with written history when it's in a book because you'd have to go right. erase 100 copies or 200 copies of that book. You well, know, the, too, the other... Is, if okay. you track words back from the 1700s, take certain words and track them from the 1700s to today. And you'll find out that the words' meanings have changed as you go on. Oh, take them back to the Middle Ages. I studied oh, they, Middle Age words. literature, and I mean, it's a whole different language. Completely yeah. different language, but it's still English. That's why people can't, don't understand the Constitution or the Bill of Rights or anything, you know, the Magna Carta, any of this stuff. is because the way it was written then compared to the way people speak today. Sure. The meanings have totally changed, and the people are idiots. I just they posted a. Uh, that's why. That's why Judge Bork scared the hell out of him, because when he was up for Supreme Court, uh, Supreme Court, and they asked him, "Well, how would you interpret the Constitution?" He says, "I'll interpret it in the language it was written." And he says, "Well, it was written in English." He says, "No, you don't understand. I will interpret it according to 1776 English." Which means yep. that the definitions have changed. That's right. why they got rid of Judge Bork. They didn't want this guy in there because he knew the Constitution and what it meant. I just posted and they an changed interview. the meanings of the words. I just posted an interview in the chat that Ed Griffin did with a guy by the name of Norman Dodd. Norman Dodd was like the Ken Starr of the, of the 1950s. And his job was to investigate the endowments uh, for corruption into uh, how they corrupted and coerced people into rewriting the school books and everything else. And it was so bad, what they found was so bad that his assistant, who was a successful attorney at the time, went insane. She couldn't work again because she was just so sickened by what she found out in the investigation. And he, he died, I think, at 82. Fantastic, fantastic interview. But see, that's, they don't care about the kids' education. All they care about is how much money they can steal from the average working guy. But Well, it's, it's more than money. To, to think that it's just money and it's just about money, it's not. Well, it's, mo- it's money, power, and control. But it's not even about the – it's not even – they have all the power they want. And no, they, they have don't. all the money. Oh, they do. Because no, they, 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 they own every head of state, everything. They have all the power and, and money they want. It's the control that they're after because the control for them is like a drug that feeling of i can make things happen that is such a drug to these people it's disgusting and you have to remember these people aren't educated like you can or me or joe or jules they don't sit back and you know look at things through the glasses of humanity and say well jesus you know that guy's hurt over there i should go help him no Wrong. You know, and, and what's even more funny, like anti tyranny news in the chat room just pointed out if they stop teaching handwriting in school, and especially cursive, 
Well, the original Constitution was written in cursive. Right. And they can't read that if they don't know how to write it or read it. So it, there's a big problem. And then once you do that, anybody can translate that, you know, from cursive into anything they want. And they won't even know. You know what, though? I really look at cursive as like right brain versus left brain. I mean, there's some creativity there. And by getting rid of that, I mean, it's, it's, an, art, it's an art form. It's artistic. Right. And that kind of kills a part of expression. You know, you're not able to be creative now when you're expressing things. And Papa, the one thing I wanted to mention is you're absolutely right because they're trying to create a, I mean, you've seen that video, right? Over three or four generations now, they've completely brainwashed us and moved us into this, you know, society of slaves that know how to take direction. I agree. Ah, and with that, the cheesy bumper music comes in and we have to go to break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I have to admit... Some of these bumper tunes are starting to grow on me. This one reminds me of a James Bond movie. Not really anyone in particular, just all of them, because it's got that same, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Trumpets. Sound. Yeah, trumpet <laughs> or, uh, what, what, what do they call those instruments? What do they call what the, that, that section of instruments, trumpets and tubas and all that? Horns. You have an orchestra? Or the, the horn section. Horn, the horn section. That's what I was looking for. Or the brass section, whatever you want to call it. I like the... You know, I like when they use trumpets and saxophones and stuff, you know, instruments in music. I can't stand this electronic crap that they come out with now and auto tunes. Ugh. Well, here's one for you from the 50s, Popeye. You should love this one. That's some classic stuff right there. Yes, you know, you want to hear something interesting? Here's an interesting tidbit of history. The guy who, the artist and creator of Popeye, uh, he died. And I guess somebody bought his house or whatever. And years later, they were digging through the basement, which was his original shop, which is where Popeye, the cartoon character, was created. He has a little workshop down there. And they found, like, original, uh, what are they called, lithographs or whatever? The the yeah, the original sketches. Yeah, well, they found these that they made on the, you know, those the plastic sheets, whatever they were called, or cellophane, or whatever, whatever it was made out of. I don't remember. I don't remember the exact, you know, term or what it was made out of. But they found these things, and they were from, you know, when the cartoon was first created, you know, and some of them dated. Uh, some of them were like, you know, obviously they were all original, but he had, you know, just thrown his like signature on on a few of them, and like they just were sitting buried in this box and they happened to open this box that was in the basement it had come with the house no one had ever really gone through it and when they were cleaning the basement up they found this stuff i mean how much they sold it obviously they were probably worth a fortune but too. they were probably able to pay the house off with what was in that box with one of them yeah that's what i would have done you know first thing i would have done was walk right over to the mortgage company i would have walked right over to their headquarters do, 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 knock on the door i mean yes i'd like to pay off my mortgage how much is the principal because that's the key thing right there yeah you pay off what you own, the principal. That right. really is a bite in the rear end because then they don't make any interest on it. So you just, they get mad. Oh, yeah, they get real mad. They don't like that. They try to, you know, you don't have to pay it off. Think about it. No, really, I thought about it. <laughs> I, I, I want nothing to do with your loan. Here. Here you go. Yeah. It's, um, you know, went, speaking, went of schools, whole... speaking of schools, I want to, uh, I, I got to cut you off for a second, Ken, because uh, I want to bring in. Um, a guest that we brought on during the break, uh, and I, I don't want to get too far past what we were talking about last segment. Uh, when we were talking about schools, uh, my good friend and good friend of the entire radio network over here at Orion, and uh, truther activist. Except Ken. F yeah, except for Ken. And fellow talk radio host, Bob Tuscan. Bobby Bag of Donuts in the hizzy. And uh, <laughs> I think Bobby wants to uh, give us his bag of donuts on the Educational system. So go ahead, Bobby. Back Just down. Please us. don't talk about Jerry Curl anymore. <laughs> I'm a little offended uh, that you bring that up, Ken. But I'll try to continue. <laughs> well, you can handle it. You are Bob Tusk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, after all, I'm Bob Tuscan. Anyways, uh, no, I, I heard your fruitful conversation on uh, the education system, aka indoctrination system. And, uh, of course, there's a lot of different directions you could take this. We can look at the Prussian education system, uh, Charlotte uh, Iserbeth, and others that I've um, looked into do a good job of exposing how this works. We can look at the, the bells between classes, very similar to a, a Pavlovian technique. Uh, so they are conditioning people like animals in our education system today, not uh, equipping them with... And this is what I wanted to add to the conversation, the trivium and critical thinking and, and these skills that the powers that shouldn't be amongst themselves, they teach this in the school. So here's the, here's the thing that I wanted to relay is that while the useless eaters are receiving these pitiful educations, the powers that shouldn't be of the, the more uh, of uh, the, the bourgeoisie, uh, of uh, our planet, they're learning all about uh, critical thinking and trivium and all these skills, the seven liberal arts. But uh, the useless eaters, well, if you were to ask them if the, what the civ seven civil arts are, they would tell you they have no clue whatsoever. So it's no surprise that the lamestream media is able to manipulate them. No, Bobby, you know they would tell you? Are... They would say, you mean the seven deadly, the seven deadly words you're not allowed to say on, uh, on, on TV? I've heard that joke. I could tell you the seven dirty words. Ha, 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 ha. But they couldn't tell you anything like of any value. So just goes to show you how dumbed down our culture is. I'm assuming that you're talking about art, language, music, etc., yeah, well, the the seven liberal arts, okay, if you break it down, they, they include uh, geometry, uh, physics. Let me let me get the list here so, so I don't butcher it because I'm, I'm not the best at these things. But uh, we have the trivium and then the quadrivium. And the two of those combined make the seven liberal arts. So the trivium is grammar, logic, and rhetoric. And the quadrivium, which is the one I need help with. Give me a second here. Quadrivium. If I can look it up. Uh, let's go to trivium. Education. Live radio, folks. Trivium. And you can follow along with me here. Education. Well, aren't you going to have Jan Irvin on tomorrow to be talking well, he's gonna about be, this? He's going to be uh, guest hosting or co-hosting, I should say, with me. Uh, the quadrivium is mathematics, geometry, music, and astronomy. So there you go. There's the seven liberal arts. And check out Bob's show tomorrow. I know I'm giving it a plug now. Make sure you Why? listen to Bob's show tomorrow. It's going to be on the Holo Ho Holocaust. Yeah, but he's a smart guy, and they who? can check out Jan Irvin. Ah, uh, Jan, uh, who cares? And then they can check out his website and learn more. <laughs> so I mean, I'm Bob I, Tuscan. I'll be the host. Okay, that's what I would do. <laughs> Uh oh! Is that, what's bigger, your afro or your light? <laughs> what's bigger? Depends who I'm uh, in front of at the moment. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it's it's a fascinating twist to this all that we can equip ourselves with. <clears throat> See, here's the thing with with the internet and, and with us being able to share this information with WTF and all the great shows like Joe's and Popeyes and Ken's and uh, even my own. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, we can learn these skills that they've been keeping from us, and we should learn these skills. Just because you're a truther or you're aware doesn't mean that you're completely equipped with all these skills. So I'm always refreshing. I'm always learning, and I would encourage all of our listeners to do the same as a prerequisite to any of the other things that we face on our trip down the rabbit hole Sundays on, on Orion Talk Radio. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> that was fantastic. I don't know about you guys, but I hated geometry. It was absolutely <laughs> hell on earth. Geometry was the one that. that I liked. The algebra and the other ones I couldn't stand. But for some reason, I, I could grasp geometry. And fractal geometry is one of the most fascinating subject matters that I think I've ever looked into. I think you I would know about about grass, bro. Is that because I'm, I'm, I'm tripping too much on entheogens that I'm into fractals, Joe? 
Could be, my friend. Could be. Like I said, I think I would rather rearrange my sock drawer and then spend the next day watching grass grow. Yeah, but honestly, it's some of the. I know it sounds boring. It, for for beginners, there's a movie out there called Fractals: The Hidden Dimensions. You you can uh, start yeah, with that. I'm not uh, saying it's not fascinating. I'm just saying that, dude. That, some of these patterns that happen in nature, Joe, when you look at them on like a super microscopic level, and the deeper you look, and the more and more yeah, you look, you yeah. realize the pattern is actually just repeating itself over and over and I mean, over I've and had over some again. WTF moments looking into fractals, Joe? It's like, oh, what? hey, me too. And me too. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm just saying that. You I know, was some also people, high on ayahuasca, but that's okay. But that's all right. See, some people are left brain. Some people are right brain. Some people are artistic. Some people are mathematical. You know, it's just the way it is. My brain is not wired up to do uh, that kind of stuff. But I'll tell you, I was absolutely fascinated looking at, like, some of the works of, like, Marco Roden and his Roden coil. That right there is a is huge fractal geometry example. And... They use it to um, to uh, make over unity generators, which is and all cell phones uh, operate on a fractal uh, principle. That's how they uh, invented the um, the antenna, from what I understand. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, our awesome music means that we're going to break. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned oh, yeah. for more intriguing conversation here on What the... We'll be right back. Welcome back to the seventies, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, actually, when I when I first heard that Popeye, I, the first thing that came to mind when I first heard that intro music was uh, was the original Batman. <laughs> Just the beginning you know, of it was weird. Their their stuff was kind of cheesy back then, but at least there was effort put into it. You know, because they didn't have all the super special effects or music. So when it came to or you know like. Uh, music effects and stuff so when it came to music or movies they actually had to put a little bit of effort into it i mean now by comparison when you look at the special effects you're like god that stuff was cheesy but when i was a kid you know stuff on wires was woohoo you know what i mean i know i know exactly what you mean man that that was the cool stuff and you you, you had to use your imagination a little bit to uh make it seem like it was real but now people don't even have to do that no, they yeah. use a computer and a synthesizer. Yeah, it's the. You, you, how many times do you see in music, you know, the newest thing, and it's always got the same bass beat. And I, I think I, I forget what exactly it is, uh, the beats per second or whatever. But it, they set it, you know, like a metronome. They set it to a certain beat, and then it's all these songs are set pretty much to that same beat, and then that's why they get stuck in your head and they're catchy. It's all done for a reason. I mean, there's so much more to it. I would have to do like an 18-hour show just on that topic alone to cover it. But you, you just go do the research, you know. And, and of course, I have to tell you, the only place you'll probably find the research is online or maybe in a book that you found online and you can order the book and read it. But, uh, you know, the, the Internet is a tool, ladies and gentlemen. It is not a place. It is not a physical place that... Um, it, bandits run around, and they, you know, this isn't the Wild West. I mean, according to them, they call the internet the Wild West. The internet is a tool, and it is what. Well, it, it might be it, a tool, Popeye, but it's also filled with tools. So we oh, have to oh, understand. Oh, that and, too. And I, that was more. <laughs> that point. This point here is more than just uh, getting to throw that pun in. Uh, the fact of the matter is, it's a vacuum, and it sucks up all this fluff and junk and dilutes the little tokens of truth. And we have to realize that, and the powers that shouldn't be, they know this. That's why they've kept it on for so long, because it's so diluted with all the Schmendricks pushing their fear porn and their uh, distractions for those that uh, want to continue to be apathetic, that they don't care that there's this small percentage of people whose Alexa ratings are surpassing the lamestream jerks like Chris Matthews. 
I mean, we're winning at the end of the day, but the powers that shouldn't be know that, well, the fact of the matter is the sheeple are going to be submersed, uh, immersed in uh, the um, BS and the, the minutiae of it all. So it won't really bother them uh, or it won't really affect them. Well, look what they've done with television. It's probably one of the greatest teaching tools ever invented until the Internet. And they turned it into entertainment. And now you look at the uh, the Internet, and what have they done? They've turned it into entertainment, Facebook, MySpace, all the online games, everything else. They don't want people to think. They exactly. Not- exactly. Great point, Ken. Same thing with the YouTube videos. What videos, if you go to the front page, what videos will you see? If you just go to YouTube.com and go to the front oh, page. all garbage, right. bro. They're garbage Absolute videos. Absolute garbage. Exactly. You won't see anything that anybody of any any intellectual uh, uh, ability put forth. Well, I mean, what, was that, what was that one? It was a couple of weeks ago. Um, two old people trying to work their... Um, their webcam and it got like 50 bazillion hits yeah and, it, dude it's the dumbest yeah. stuff yawning yawning cute kitten and it'll have like 18 million hits in a day and a half yeah but and then yet, you, could, you could show video of somebody committing a crime of uh, uh, what somebody who is in uh in office committing a crime and you get 60 hits dude you could have you could have video footage of like barack obama and joe biden gang raping somebody and People would be like, I could really care less, but you know, if it's yeah, if there's a if there's a cute little kitten involved yawning. Well, that's what you have to do. You have to put that in the title. You know, anytime you want your video to get a lot of hits, you know, if it's about like fluoride or something, you have to title it. I swear to God, I've tested this. I've done it where I just uploaded a video and I completely named it something stupid that had nothing to do with the actual content of the video, and it got more hits that way. It's really sad that you have to do that. But see, it's, that goes to show you that it's not some automated system that YouTube allows to run and that the stuff that really does get seen or that's interesting to people gets put up there. No. Well, Charlotte Isserby is right. It's the dumbing down of America. Well, they're, they're pushing it on them, too, though, because, like, I mean, they control what goes up on that front page now. You know, it's not any, through any automated system. You know YouTube controls what's up there. So, of course, they you know, want you to see some 18-year-old kid doing stupid stuff or making some stupid video talking about, you know, oh, conspiracy theorist, all you guys are stupid, you know. Oh, I got my head stuck in a toilet bowl, man. <laughs> the, the one thing that right, I see... Shut up, Joe. Hold on, guys. Go on, Jules. One thing that I see about the Internet is that it's akin to the Library of Alexandria. And the sad fact of the matter is, is that with everything being electronic, things can disappear. And what say we had, you know, an EMP or whatever, whether it be from a nuclear explosion or uh, the sun or whatever, all that information could be lost again, just like it was originally. And I mean, think about all of the mind share that's out there and all the knowledge that we put in digital format that someday is just going to vanish. Yeah. Well, that's why I tell people all the time. I say it all the time, time and time and time and time and time again. Become okay. scribes and write stuff down? Well, yeah, well, exactly. Write stuff down, but buy books, man. While they're yeah, still out there, it. use the I'll internet. Tell you, one of, buy one books. Places, one of the best places I found uh, here in here in town, they've got a uh, a used bookstore. Yeah. And I can go to the library. Those say, places are awesome. Oh, yeah, because I've gone to the library and said, you know, have you got the, a copy of this book? Oh, no, we don't have it. I go to the used bookstore. There's six copies up there. there yeah, we there have a guy so here much, that... There's Go so ahead. much information out there in old books that are is so relevant to today. And estate sales. Estate sales. Find them in estate sales because, uh, or uh, like in 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 our case, I got fifteen hundred books at a, an estate sale for like three hundred bucks. <laughs> What'd you do with them all? Oh my god! I have them all. I have some of them. Some of them I donated. Some uh, I gave. Archie. You know. Gave, yeah, I mean, it, it all depends. Like, a lot of it, some of it was crap, but you wouldn't believe some of the stuff that I, I mean, like, uh, manuals on how to uh, do surgery, uh, all these different um, survival guides, physics books, you know, educational books, all sorts of stuff. I mean, it was just, it was a tremendous find, but I mean, it was an estate sale. How, yeah. to, do sur- how to do brain surgery on yourself without <laughs> anesthesia? Yeah, I've seen uh, some of nah- 
I, I saw that on Discovery. I know how to do that. <laughs> that. That and how to repair a hernia with a soldering iron and a butter knife. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the one thing about being a book monger is that when you try to move, that's the one thing I discovered that was the most difficult thing ever. Books are so damn heavy. And when you have 30 or 40 boxes of them, it's not fun. Oh, yeah, it's it's crazy. That's why I hope never to move again. No. <laughs> I hope I stay. Yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a, I had a, yeah, I had a, let me tell you something. I've moved like six times in the past five years or four years or yeah, six times in like the past five years, and I've uh, I've gotten rid of a lot of crap, but I narrowed down. I had to clean down my uh, book collection, so I I narrowed it down to things that were important, and I got rid of books that were mindless fluff or stuff that I had and that were were not really important. So I donated. What I did was I just took that stuff down to the VA hospital and I gave it to them. Because they, they bring it upstairs to the terminal wing, so all the guys that are dying, they, they have nothing to do. They read, and I figured they'd want some humor. You know, if they're dying. You know, what do you want to do? You know, did you guys know the New World Order controls the world? Well, thanks for telling me. I die in three days. You know, th- thanks for right. telling me now. Well, I there, there's no point in it. So I I donated all my humor books, my joke books, my dirty joke books. I gave them all to the vets. The vets, the old guys, love the dirty joke books. I would want to know. Well. Uh, you know what? You 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 might, but some of these guys, dude, you, you would be arguing with them and pissing them off. I know. You know, so it's not even. They'll figure it out when they get on the other side and they learn truth and wisdom and knowledge and wherever you know wherever we go. So whatever. But I, no. I do, I do give out DVDs when I go to the VA all the time. Those things go like hotcakes, man. Now they all know me because I've been doing it for so long. Now, I have guys come up to me. Hey, you got any more movies? <laughs> And I tell them, well, what one do you have? Because it depends on what I have on me. You know, what movie do you have? What, what, what did I give you? Oh, well, I saw you put it down on one of the tables, and I, I took it. But, you know, well, what was the name of it? And they tell me. I'm like, oh, well, here, I got a couple more. Take, check these out. And then I'll see them like a month later. Oh, my God. You know, and it's important. You might think that waking up old people is not important, but wrong. It's very important because they have a lot of sway and a lot of pull with a lot of people. No, it's important to wake up everybody, not just a certain demographic. That's why that's why the retirees scared the hell out of the politicians. There's so many of them, but they're so easy to be lied to. That's that's the big problem there. They're, they're extremely vulnerable, you know, and it's just it's it's sad that they've been kind of boxed into a corner. But everybody has, and soon uh, people will have nothing to lose, and they'll be like an animal. Caught in a corner with nothing else to do but attack. Good. I agree. We're going to break, guys. Top of the hour break, ladies and gentlemen. We're back in a few. Stay tuned. Hour number two. More intriguing roundtable talk. Here on the Orion Talk Radio Network. The following program may contain subject matter and language that those with a weak constitution will find distasteful and offensive. You've been warned. Come on, man. WTF. Welcome back to WTF, ladies and gentlemen. It's hour number two. I'm your host, Popeye. Well, I'm your host this evening. This isn't my regular show. We all take turns hosting it. Tonight, I'm hosting it. Hanging out with my friend, Ken Hildebrand. He's got a show here on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Hanging out with Jules. She's co-host with uh, Jimmy X over on Radio X. And a uh, super, super IT woman. 
very, very smart woman. She's a genius. She's the person responsible for the Flash player and all the other stuff on uh, the uh, website and the website itself. So thanks, Jules. And then we have the one, the only, the incredible Bob Tuscan. <laughs> and they say I don't talk about Zionism, Popeye. Well, <clears throat> I got news for them, Popeye. Tonight on the Bob Tuscan Show, we exposed Mossad's connection to the most recent bombing of an Iranian facility. This has now made mainstream news. According to a Time Magazine source, it was a Mossad job. So l'chaim, Mossad. <laughs> it's about time we got those goyim in Iran. <laughs> and my Jewish fro, well, it's our secret weapon. Signing off, this is Zionist Bob. <laughs> you schwarzes. <laughs> Goyam. <laughs> You're going to be getting an email about that for the next three weeks, Bob. That was awesome. <laughs> he, he's got some interesting, uh, mm. interesting things going on right now. He came out of a ground. He came out of the, a hole in the ground. He was levitating. He had smoke billowing out around him. There was fire from underneath him. And he had lightning bolts coming out of his fingertips. That was beautiful. He's one of them, I tell you. It's funny, you know, as much as I take the time to uh, look at all sides of the issue, look at this octopus, because, you know, it has tentacles in Zionism, in the Vatican, on the reptilians. No, I, I added that one, not the reptilians. But you know what I mean? I, I, I cover all this stuff, and people have the nerve. They have the nerve. I get more messages about uh, me being from a, a Jewish family and, and uh, being You're Jewish. Jewish. I come from a Jewish family, Ken. Can I you believe that? I didn't know that. No, it's true. Uh, now I can't talk to you, Bob. I didn't know you were a Jew either. I had my bar mitzvah. Ugh. I didn't get one of them. Well... Neither did I, but I'm a... I, if it was up to me... Neither side likes me, so... It was up to me. We'd have mandatory bar mitzvahs. Okay? Everybody hey, would be circumcised. The, you can even leave out the mitzvah. I would just like to go to the bar. Well, that's I typically what dreidel. they're about. Oh, come on, Jules. We can get you a dreidel. Oh, awesome. All you got to do is just help us murder Palestinians. I have a solution to the Middle East crisis over there. This manufactured piece of garbage. I know how we settled the whole darn thing. And all of these uh, the, the uh, people in the military industrial complex can make a lot of money at it. You take Iran and you sell them 600 nuclear tip missiles. And you sell 600 to Iraq and 600 to Saudi Arabia. That way it, it kind of balances everything out. Because we used to have a thing back when I was growing up. I know that's well before Popeye's time. Called Mutual Assured Destruction. Give them all nuclear weapons and say, go ahead, boys. So you make the money from selling the weapons to them and all the weapon systems. And then when they kill each other... You don't want to take the oil. You don't have to. Why should we send well, troops over? Well, if they dropped enough nukes in each other, they wouldn't just kill themselves. They would kill the entire planet. And everybody They're going to kill us that. anyhow. What's the difference? Well, but the point is they know that. That's why they don't use nukes, because they understand what would happen and how uninhabitable this whole planet would be. Okay. What they will, what I really worry about is all these suitcase nukes that went missing when the Soviet Union fell, you know, and now it's Russia. But when it was the USSR, they had all these suitcase-sized nukes, and they admit that these things went missing and that they don't know where some of them are, and it's impossible to get well, them. Now, I'm not worried about look, I'm not worried about some Arab getting their hands on it and doing it. I'm worried about this rogue element in the inside the the government. I'm worried that they have well, it and well, that they're going to light it off. 
can I tell you something? And I guess at the time I was kind of brainwashed and I didn't understand the whole big picture. But I used to do all this emergency preparedness stuff and take all these classes from Homeland Security and whatever. And do you know what they told us? And this is probably about four years ago now that there are suitcase nukes in all of our big cities. And the way they got here was that they dressed up as Mexicans. The terrorists dressed up as Mexicans and walked them across the border. That's what that they is, told us. That is the most clever disguise. <laughs> yeah. uh, these, these suitcase nukes are probably at a Mexican restaurant near you, folks. Uh, <laughs> if your Mexican restaurant owner appears uh, to be a, a bit uh, Jewish, uh, that might be a sign. Uh, the biggest threat, Jules, uh, with, uh, when it comes to nuclear weapons are the only countries that have dropped the nuclear weapons, uh, which is the U.S., and it's a uh, bitch, depending on which way you look at it, Israel. And, of course, Israel is the most provocative uh, owner of nuclear weapons. They continue to test their weapons. They just came out with a new missile that could attack New York. That's how far it can take it. So they could, could theoretically drop a bomb on us. I mean, they attacked the USS Liberty. What well, makes us think that Israel wouldn't create some sort of false flag terror where they dropped the nuke? Now, I don't think that that's going to necessarily happen, but I do think it's fascinating to look at. And, of course, Pakistan. Pakistan. The Pakis have a nuke. And that seems to be a bit of a wild card. Well, here, talking about nukes, here I want to dovetail into my, the next topic. Jules. You yes. were telling me some really disturbing stuff off air uh, tonight, and if it's if all this stuff is accurate, like we're really screwed. Yeah, What's going accurate. on with this this new the the new plants all over the place? Like, you know, having issues. What's going? You said something in Pakistan. And going yeah, on. well, What's going two on? things that Bob just talked about. One, Bob, I don't know if you saw when Fukushima first happened, but there were quite a few rumors floating around about. Uh, Israel and the Mossad being involved in the Fukushima disaster. Sure, there was an Israeli company that uh, ran operations at that right, facility. Right, they did the security, yeah. Uh, of course, Stucknex, or Stucknet, or however you pronounce that. Stucksnet. Uh, Stucksnet. Stucksnet. I can, I can never pronounce it. What is it? Stucksnet? Stucksnet, yeah. Stucksnet, all right. Stucksnet uh, was a program used uh, which was developed by the Mossad. Yep. So there seems to be all sorts of connections to Israel with this one. Uh, I don't know, Jules. Uh, that, does that mean that this was uh, fabricated by them, that they used uh, the earthquakes and tsunamis to create this event? I don't know that we can necessarily say that, but there are all sorts of interesting uh, connections here. And the fact of the matter is, regardless of, of whether or not the event was manufactured, we know that uh, afterwards... They totally dropped the ball. Now, here's the question. Did they drop the ball on purpose? Do they right. not care that they're going to be putting cesium, uh, plutonium, all these dangerous elements into our environment? It's pretty darn scary what's happening. Just like with the uh, – and I'm going to let you take it back to, to some of the info you're going to share tonight uh, about Nukushima. But the, another example and another parallel is the, the oil spill, which is still going on. Yeah. Still going on, just like Nukushima, still going on. Our planet's still dying, yet uh, we're more concerned with a football coach. So, Bob, what you're saying is if we go to a Mexican restaurant and our waiter has a yarmulke, we should be concerned? No, because not all Jews wear a yarmulke. Here's what you do. Okay. Here's the test, okay? And don't tell anybody I told you this, because this is just between us. Here's what you got to do. You have... Um, you know, some change on you, right? Preferably nickels and pennies, right? And you take that change and you shake it in your hand. Now, if you see their ears perk up a little bit, that's the first step, okay? And now, I'm, I'm not going to continue this because I'm just going to get myself in trouble. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of emails. Lady, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ho guest hosting non hating live you. tomorrow, Bob Tuscan. I am the most self-hating dude. No, I, I joke. I, you know, and, and here's the other thing you got to do. You got to get the bagels, okay? Cause the bagels are the real... Well, hold your bag of bagels right there, Bobby Bag of Donuts, because we're going to break. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we will be right back. Oh, yeah.
And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to WTF. And now, here's your lovely co-hostess, Jules, on some of the most Nukashima Fukushima news in the planet. Go ahead, Jules. That was awesome. Thank you. Um, so we were talking about uh, the Mossad and some of the nuclear issues that are going on in the Gulf, right? And you would ask the question as to whether or not this was intentional. My personal opinion is it has to be. How can it not be? Does anyone else agree with me? I mean, how can this be uh. going on and nobody... I mean, if you remember when Fukushima first happened and Hillary Clinton right away got with the Japanese uh, commerce minister and they decided that the Japanese economy was so important that we would do whatever it takes to help them maintain their economy. Now you find out later that we had all kinds of money invested there and so we had to make sure that their stock market stayed up because we were going to lose all kinds of uh, funds, you know, that some of these fund managers had but you find out later that they're you know they stopped testing for radiations we're not really getting any real-time readings canada followed suit i just see something yesterday now that um arnie gunderson had talked about how he had friends at the state department and they are not testing any food that is coming from Japan. They're just telling us that it's safe. But of course they don't want to test it because they know no. if they test it, of course it's going to test positive And then they have to do something about it. Right. So what they do is they don't look at it. And it's called plausible deniability. deniability. Do you remember what Three Mile Island happened here in the U.S.? I do. Yes. All right. I was working in an industry that worked with the nuclear industry at the time. They did everything wrong. All the guys that were in the control room, on that, they did everything wrong. But all the safety systems still shut those power plants down. What happened to Fukushima? Yeah. Stuxnet. Stuxnet, maybe. So, I don't know. But one thing I wanted to mention, and just to be aware of, there was an article that came out yesterday that... Are you guys still there? Yeah, go we're on. on. The edge of oh, our okay. Yes. Um, there was an article that came out yesterday that said that uh, Japan is shipping tea to Canada. And the tea is being labeled from Canada and being shipped here. Now, I don't know if that's true. I've stopped drinking and purchasing green tea for anything that happened after March 11th since this happened. Is that the only tea? Because when you say tea, you, 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 you weren't kind of specific. So is it just yeah. green tea or is it all types I, of tea? From I Japan? do not know. Well, it depends but, where the tea was grown. I mean, right. yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I, should, I wouldn't get anything from Japan. But do you think it's just the tea, the green tea that's from Canada? No, well, here's Japan, the thing. The tea plant, Popeye, uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but the tea plant, from what I understand, is different than any other plant in that it absorbs all of the uh, materials that may be in the soil, the nuclear particles. So it, it's particularly vulnerable, and that's why tea is often heavily prone with fluoride. There's tons of fluoride in the tea if you use fluoridated water uh, or any uh, fluoridated uh, pest control. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that tea plants suck everything up, but that doesn't surprise me. I mean, most plants do suck things up and retain some stuff. So if it's yeah, it, it, if it's by nature, you know, pulling more stuff in, anything that's in that groundwater is going to... Now, and red did, tea... Did you see well, what they, they'll just label it power tea. Well, wait, sure. you want to see how sick these guys are? Did you see what they did with Disney World over there in Tokyo? No, what? what? Disney opened it up. No. Oh, yeah, they've been open for business for like two months now, three months. I mean, what is it down the street from Fukushima? It's in Tokyo. Yeah, Tokyo has been getting irradiated yeah. heavy duty, and they said <clears throat> that there's no way it could have been. But all those animals, all those Disney, yeah, movies, everything, and Disney's got to know what's going on. For for somebody to say, well, Disney doesn't know horse crap. They own. They're one of the six evil companies that owns the media. Don't tell me that crap that they don't know what's going on. Well, reports coming in say that Japan is done. Well, that Japan the whole country is, done. is just done. I think we're done. You know, I read well, something Tokyo yesterday. If we the left coast is done. What was Canada that? Canada is done. 
I said Hawaii. this whole con- this whole planet is going to be. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're killing the planet. I mean, I saw something well, yesterday that we reactors- actually killing the planet because the planet can the planet will come back. Look, the planet's been through much much worse. Okay, people are not looking at this yeah. directly. We're not killing the planet. We're killing ourselves. Is what we're doing. I know. I'm losing. We might, hair. We might screw up nature a little bit and kill off some animals. Eventually, nature will replace them with other new species that'll spring up to replace that. Okay, that's the way it works. It's the way it always has. But us, we keep this up. We're gonna wipe ourselves off the planet. That's You're saying something, Joel. Go ahead. Yeah, here's a theory that I have on this, Popeye. If you notice, there's a bunch of dots that have all happened since Fukushima. One is that all of a sudden our dead space program has now been rejuvenated, and there's all kinds of money being pumped in again for all these new probes, and let's go to Mars, let's go to the moon, we're going to build bases. I mean, there was a whole um, slew of articles about a month ago about we're sending all these ships up, and we're going to start talking about building bases up there. Also, a company in Buffalo um, is now working on finishing the development. They're in human trials at Roswell Park for an anti-radiation medication that was financed by the Department of Defense. Um, You also have all these companies now that are privatizing space travel. Uh, NASA's partnering up with them, you know, how we're going to get our rockets into space. And I'm just seeing some really big ugliness coming. Like, let's completely pollute this planet to the point where, you know, we'll get sick. They'll make money off of us through all the sicknesses and the medication and take us for every penny that we have left. They're all working on getting onto a spacecraft and leaving this rock. That's what I think. I mean, they're not going to be able to survive in bunkers forever. So they're going to take their anti-radiation pills until they can figure out how to build bases. And that's where they're going to send their offspring. You know, you that's know, just a theory. Of, that's a theory. It's funny <clears throat> that they, in, in some of the instances of table salt, you know, they want to take that off the table. But a lot of table salt is iodized, uh, iodine, iodine, you know what I'm talking about. It's got iodine in it. And iodine pills are supposed to be one of the things you take for radiation poisoning. Only for uh, iodine-131. Yeah, but even still. Plutonium yeah. and cesium, that's not going to help. Well, yeah, if, you have, if you put iodine naturally in your diet, you don't have to take the pills in an emergency situation. I mean, you still would want to probably anyway, just to be sure. But you, it, you really don't have to worry about it if you have natural, uh, if mm-hmm. you have a certain amount of, in your body. I, I snort but, iodine, actually, guys. But I how, just, many, mm, how I many people can't. don't have it naturally in their but body? But you can, you can have taking, it naturally in your body. Just they're listen, taking listen. it off. They're taking it off the well, table. But you, you don't have to listen. You don't have to rely on the restaurants. But do take care of it yourself. Go over to Whole Foods. You can. It's like seven or eight bucks. Right, but Get you got to watch what kind of salt you buy. We're no, just, not salt. Ken, listen. You don't have to even do that. Just go buy. Gotta kelp. snort the good salt. Just listen seriously. Just go buy kelp over at, uh, or you can buy liquid iodine drops over there too. Okay, and you or can put, drop it in, into your. Uh, into your coffee and just drink it. It's not no, that expensive. Go over, go over to. Uh, I'm talking about iodine. I know. Well, go, betadine has iodine in it, though. I know, but you can just take. Well, either one, but you can also get kelp and just take the kelp like vitamins, and you build mm-hmm. it up in your body slowly. Okay, and then you don't have to worry about it because the the way that gets into your body is you don't you lack that iodine. So what happens is your body absorbs it and now you have the radioactive iodine in you and you're screwed forever. If you really you have know, you got to be careful. You don't you have know, all of this suntan lotion that they got out there when I was a kid. It's, it's poison. <clears throat> My grandmother yeah. used to a couple of drops of iodine and put it in baby oil. And that's what we used to yeah. use from suntan lotion. Well, the well, sunshine lotion, lotion is lotion poison. Stuff with titanium oxide and all this other stuff. It's nanosized too, Pop. I yeah, it, it, well, yes. it's not on purpose. You know, you know let's get into I want to get into that because that's something, that's actually something really interesting. That is a WTF thing. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, so, man. We're going to break, guys. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. I go out naked and get in the sun all the time. You have to be naked if you want. Vitamin D. Vitamin, Vitamin D. D, baby. gosh guys it's swell to be with you all
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to What the... Today, we're a little more serious. We are very serious. But there are serious WTF moments, so... Very what happens serious. when you have a roundtable discussion with random people. Either I way, resent that. Our table is not round. It's square. It's a square table. Well, okay, a square table. And Bob's sitting at the children's side. The only thing that is round is my afro. Well, yeah, your ego's not round. Your ego's just all encompassing. Too big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jules, what's going on with the Russians? They're all uh, that- fried into space, and they can't even get a satellite into space. Now, what's coming back down onto Earth? What do we have to look forward to raining back down onto us now? Yeah, uh, Russia has been having a couple uh, launch failures over the last, um, I don't know, a few months. But they launched their Mars moon mission last week, and uh, it was, you know, big fanfare. And what happened was apparently the rocket boosters didn't fire once it was leaving our um, orbit. And now it's stuck in a degrading orbit coming back down. And they spent the last two days trying to get control of this thing. And now it's run out of battery power. Oh, so it that's is on, just awesome. Yeah. Well, wait. And it is on a death fall. How come it doesn't have enough battery power? Did they not think of this? Did they not sit back and go, well, this could happen. So let's, let's you know, make sure we have a, a backup plan. Yeah. The rabbit died and it's going to land in Miami. <laughs> I mean... This is like the third falling object in three months. Yeah, but that was but, huge. What's the deal with, like, you spend, I'm sure, probably uh, how many millions of dollars? A couple hundred million to, oh, to, sure. build, to build and put this thing into space at least, right? And then now you're saying, uh, what's NASA doing? They're going to launch a Mars probe and in this Mars probe, you know, I'm going to say this, but then I, I got something else I want to add to this. In this Mars probe, I guess we're launching one, the U.S., and they're, it's going to have plutonium as fuel. It, isn't it interesting that we're launching one, and Russia was just launching one, and theirs yes. failed? It kind of yes. makes you wonder if their stuff was sabotaged in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I'm not saying it was. I'm not saying there's a conspiracy out there. I'm just saying it would be... It, it does make for interesting thinking to look at that. Now, Jules, what's this plutonium fuel deal what, what what's the deal with this you're telling me they're not going to use the solid rocket boosters no and stuff? they're not what are they using now they're using plutonium well one second back to the russian one so because of the russian rocket did not make it the distance it was supposed to it is loaded like fully loaded with dimethylhydrazine and nitrogen tetrazoxide i love that which, stuff yeah, um, they're dubbing it as the most dangerous, toxic falling uh, spacecraft ever. So, and oh, it has uh, cobalt, radioactive cobalt sixty five in it too. Oh, that's lovely. So this is coming down anywhere from November twenty sixth, which I believe is Thanksgiving. Correct me if I'm wrong. Where and early well, no, December. The twenty the twenty sixth is twenty fifth. Uh, maybe is it the Friday? Well, well, that's that. That's the that's the the two days, the Friday and the Saturday, right after Thanksgiving. Right. But where do they say is it? It's going to land, or are they pulling the the same yes, crap? Yes, we won't know until we two hours know. before. Yep, oh, that's awesome. So but, thanks for giving everybody some some idea to maybe like prevent you know exposure. Thank you. Well, what's scary about it is they said it was going between the latitudes of 51.4 degrees north and 51.4 degrees south, which is the world's most, uh, the largest population of the world lives within that zone. And it could come down anywhere. So I, I think this is pretty horrifying. But then, yeah, so I see the next Could that day, be more uh, evidence that this could be sabotage? Hmm. That it be. just so happens to be coming down in the world's most populated area? Hmm. Could Part be. of the New World's Order depopulation agenda? Hmm. Could be. I mean, they're taking us out left and right between the radiation and now falling objects. And, you know, falling objects that are going to be spraying toxic <clears throat> aerosols everywhere. But so the next day I see an article saying that NASA is launching their uh, new Mars rover and it's going to be fueled with plutonium. And there's only a very small, like, 1 in 420 chance that there'll be some sort of plutonium release during this launch. But, I mean, they're launching it in Florida, laden with plutonium. I thought we weren't ever going to do that because of the dangers. You know, uh, Christopher Everard did a movie 
uh, called Secret Space and Secret Space 2, where he talked about the secret space programs that they have going on. But when he was talking about this whole very subject, he was explaining that a lot of these uh, satellites have plutonium cores. And that's mm-hmm. how they power them. And I, I forget what it was. We did a special around 9-11, and him and I talked about this uh, over on Truth Frequency. But um, oh, what was it? It was something like a pound or two pounds of plutonium coming into the Earth's atmosphere would kill everything on the planet. Like if yeah. it was like two pounds spread but- out throughout the entire atmosphere of the planet would kill every living thing. Yeah. And so these think things, about six these satellites reactors. have like like twenty or thirty. Some of them times, the, the, I mean, most of the time it's like eight or ten pounds. Sometimes it's maybe twenty pounds, depending on how big the satellite is. Even more, you know. So who knows how much, how many pounds, or how many hundreds of pounds? Because I don't know if you've ever looked at a picture of how many satellites are out there. Okay, so think about how much plutonium is just circling the Earth. It's, Papa, it's death we, just waiting. We've had like six thousand plutonium rods burn up already in Japan vaporized into the atmosphere and a plutonium uh, refinery, a uh, reprocessing plant for spent rods also burned up during the earthquake and tsunami. All of that is in our atmosphere already and it only takes a few grains in your lungs for lung cancer. So, you know, we all look for when the doom is going to come and we're watching the slow downward spiral but sometimes when I look at this I'm like, wow, we're preparing and we're waiting for this to happen, but I think it's already kind of happened. It's just happened in slow motion. Well, it, it it's not good any of it and we need to uh, we really need to like get on top of stuff and handle business and take care of things because this is this is not good, and I don't. I think we should occupy the satellite. Well, seriously, like with the the plat, the disasters, uh, the nuke disasters, and then the BP oil spill. Yeah. Even if they weren't done on purpose, the the responses were done on purpose. The lack of response has been done on purpose. The lies and the cover ups have been done on purpose. Well, so if they think- kill all the sheep, well, they can go out and cut their own damn grass. Well, they're not going to really care about that. I mean, you know, it, that's why they have things like the neutron bomb, Ken. They they <clears> looked into things like that, so it would kill all you know humans in the area, but leave the infrastructure so that they don't have to worry about you know the yeah, roads. But who's going to fix their stuff? Who's going to cut their? They want to leave five hundred million of us. Yeah, I know what they want to leave, but the point being is the way they screw things up, there ain't going to be five hundred million. Of course, I'm not saying that their plan is foolproof and it, you know it's going to work. But it, it, it's almost like the plot of some cheesy B movie where you have a mad scientist and he's like, I'm going to destroy the world. <laughs> you know, and then things get out of control and his assistant is like, Master, look what you've done. You're going to destroy the planet. And then Superman and the super friends have to come in or whatever and, you know, save everything or Flash Gordon. I mean, that's that's where it's going, except we don't have this superhero but we do have the crazy, you know, psychotic, mad scientists. We have Obama. Yeah, he's part yeah. of the problem. <laughs> he's really part so, of the problem. I'll tell well, you what on, else. I'm gonna, Jules, i got to cut you guys off because we're going to get cut off by the break. We are? Well, no, we're not. That's Bob. I think that's oh, Bob, that Bob playing. Bob playing? <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear music coming up, and it's around the time for the break, and I was like, what the hell? I was going to segue into nanotech um, through that with mad science because there is a lot of mad science going on between, you know, uh, making these nanobots and, you know, injectable nanobots to go cure you. Well, and Bob was talking about that with the sunscreen, and, too, that it's yeah. all those nice particles. It, it, it's it's it's, it's manufactured. Those things are made at a specific level to get through your skin, right? Isn't that why they're so small? Yeah. So it gets into your. They blood. do the same thing with the chemtrails. They nanosize the aluminum, barium. Well, that's why it looks like the spider webs in midair, and it spreads out the way it does. Yeah. Dude, honestly, you want to do a test? Okay, just put something outside. No, I don't. I, outside, I have a metal table on my balcony. Okay, I live high up. Oh, there's the bumper music. I live on the sixth floor, okay? And there should not be dust or anything outside. It's windy all the time, okay? Yet if I go outside to my steel table right now and I take a white glove and I put it on and I rub my finger across it, I will not just have dirt, but it will be literally 
like you can see the metal in the dirt, the little particulate. It's disgusting. It is utterly disgusting. Ladies and gentlemen, we really are going to break now. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with the final segment of tonight's edition of WTF. Stay tuned. So they don't want you to swallow the fluoride. You know that, right? Uh, shit, I swallow two pa- I eat toothpaste. You eat toothpaste. I hold that toothpaste for Halloween. And that's the problem, ladies and gentlemen, that people eat toothpaste. <laughs> what the? F- Dude, let me tell you something. I knew a long time ago at a very young age not to eat toothpaste because I was a, a bad child. And I used to like <laughs> shift night, which is the night before Halloween. And I used to go out and we would egg certain people that were, you know, jerks or whatever. Sometimes the occasional police officer got egged uh, if we were fast enough and in a good position to do so. And one thing I learned real fast is if you wanted to um, deface someone's driveway that you didn't like, I was taught this by somebody one night, one mischief night, that you could take certain uh, brands of toothpaste at the time, and it, uh, one of them was Aquafresh, and you could write on the pavement with it, and if you left it out overnight, uh, within like, in, you know, like say you did it at like nine, ten o'clock at night. Within like 12 hours, 10, 12 hours, it would have already started to eat through the macadam. Wow. And that stuff is oil-based. All that stuff is petroleum-based, you know. So that's, that's really, if it could eat through the macadam. And then to, if you look at uh, a couple months ago, in, I think it was in Texas. In Texas or Oklahoma or something like that. Just go on YouTube and look up fluoride spill causes uh, toxic waste disaster. And... um they uh, were delivering liquid. I think it was in liquid form. They were delivering it to uh, a uh, a water treatment facility where it was going to get added to the water, and it leaked out of the truck. It some I think it, it either they broke a hose or it ate through the lining in the hose. Whatever, it has a leak, spills out into the ground, and their response was to evacuate the area and bring in a hazmat crew who went up and cleaned this stuff up wearing hazmat suits. Okay. And there was a news report about it. Yet they're going to dump this in the water supply that you drink and bathe in and cook See, with. See, I swallow toothpaste. I eat toothpaste. It, it, there you go. And then you eat toothpaste. And then you wonder why people can't even comprehend when you say things to them. And you're like, yo, man, you know, what do you think about the government? You know, do we need a bigger police state? Do we need uh-huh. more police to protect us? Of course we need more police. Of course, we more. I, I'm see, I okay. swallow toothpaste. I eat toothpaste. There you go. See, that's pretty crazy. Well, you know, Plato said, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase here, but it's something along the lines of, you know, if you're smart but lazy and not willing to get involved in politics and, and take care of things, then you're going to be ruled by people that are not as smart as you, and you deserve to be ruled by them because you refuse to get involved, you know. So you get what you, you know, you get what's coming to you because you're not, you don't, you're not willing to get involved, and that's another I problem. Kid, I play Right, exactly, because <laughs> that's about the level that we're on right now. Yes, it is. Well, uh, people don't want to think badly of the people that they put in office. You know, it's my daddy was a Democrat, my granddaddy was a Democrat, I'm a Democrat. My daddy was a Republican, my granddaddy was a Republican, I'm a Republican. You know, it, it, it boils down to the fact that they don't think for themselves anymore because they can't. Ken, you're, you're an older guy. What are your, uh, you know, like your generation, the people that you know of in your, you know, your age group, are any of them waking up to what's going on or are they still getting caught in that whole left right uh lie and you know it's this it's this group no it's the republicans no it's the democrats you know whatever you know are they realizing what's going on or no well a lot of them like i said they don't they don't want to believe that their representative would do things to them but a lot of them are looking at this stuff and going wait a minute here i'm losing my social security i'm losing my medicare stuff that i paid for they're calling it an entitlement hey if i paid for it you're damn right it's an entitlement i'm entitled to what i paid for but some of them are gradually starting to wake up just like everybody else and it's not going to happen overnight it's going to take a long time because these representatives and senators and that they've got people so bs i mean it's you know 
it, it's it's not a good situation. And the thing that they're starting to wake up to is every time there's an election season, and you watch, it hasn't started yet, but it, it will start shortly, I would say right after the first of the year. They're going to start scaring the old people. Oh, they're going to take away your Social Security. They're going to take a, you know, they've been beating that dead horse now since I was a kid. You know, it's always, oh, they're going to take the Social Security. Oh, they're going to, they're going to do this to the old people. People in this country have to remember something. Number one, in World War II, at the start of World War II, they took Americans of Japanese descent and they locked them up. Now you go to the alternative media, and we're talking about FEMA camps, and you're calling us conspiracy theorists. Well, when they lock your ass up, just sit back, put your feet up in your FEMA, little FEMA room, and just say, you know, they were right. Well, you know, what's unfortunate, Ken, is they maybe 50, 60 years ago, well, not maybe, 50, 60 years ago, they would have had a fight on their hands. Unfortunately, many people now won't need to be forced to go to the FEMA camps. Well, they're going to make them like little they... malls, and they're going to be willing to go because bad things will happen, and people will go, oh, government, save me, please. Well, why, do you, why do you think they got rid of the draft? Because the majority of the people don't know how to fight. The majority well, because... of people... Go ahead, Jules, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, because the majority of people can't afford college, and now they're using that carrot to get kids to go in there. There's no jobs, there's no future, they can't afford school, so go into the military. I yeah, mean, it's just... sad, but true, and they fill their heads with video games and first-person shooters, so they think it's fun. Yeah, but the, the thing they don't realize is how many people they're killing. Look what they did to uh, Libya, a country right. that wasn't bothering anybody, and they turned that into a third world na- a fourth world nation. And those people are never the same when they come back. I mean, when you shoot a little kid because little kids strap with bombs, I mean, I have a couple friends. They've never been the same since. You know, there's literally an Al-Qaeda flag flying over, um, what do you call it, Uh, Benghazi. Well, no, in Benghazi. Not not that Libyan flag, not that that new no. flag. That goes back to their old one of their old uh, older dictators. I'm talking about there's a black flag with Arabic writing on it. That's an Al Qaeda flag, their own made flag, and it's literally flying over the courthouse in uh, or it's either Benghazi or Misrata. It's one of the two in Libya. It's the and and everybody's like, hey, yeah, man, we we helped out in Libya. That that was that was pretty that righteous. Whole, that dude. whole thing in Libya was the biggest piece of crap. I've of ever course, seen it in is my life. disgusting. People and but dude, the most general public, they'd be like, well, we helped them out, so I guess it worked. Really, we're backing Al Qaeda, dude. Yeah, really. Yeah, that's, I, that's I, that's I don't know biggest. about we're that. Backing, we're backing the people that were fighting in another country. This whole terrorist thing is is a is a load of crap. It's another it ism, have... Ken. It's just like when yeah. you were younger, it was communism. You know, the the whole thing is this one will never end. They finally figured out a way that they can continue to keep the military industrial complex rolling, and they never have to end the war. It's just going to be ongoing, time and time again. Big because money. Yeah, because what are they going to do? Oh, well, terrorism. They they came out with a thing, and I think I mentioned this last night, where Homeland Security said, well, we we have it on reliable sources now that they're going to go after buses because buses are soft targets. Where the hell have you been for the last 20 years? Number one, we haven't had an attack since, you know, 2001. So that tells you something right there. And they can't take credit for any of that because they didn't stop a damn thing. One guy set his crotch on fire. Intelligent man there. I like that. I'm gonna. Yeah, but that, those were all puppets anyway. Those were all FBI patsies that are set up so that they can say, "You see, you see." And every time <laughs> you go and look in one of these cases where they arrest somebody, the Portland Christmas tree idiot, all of them, these morons with the ricin attack in Georgia. Okay, it's all the I'm same not- crap. The FBI oh. always has its fingers in it. You know, it's either the FBI, the CIA, Interpol, whoever. No, lately, uh, it's the FBI. All all of them, the common denominator is the FBI. And it has come out. It comes out. The FBI is involved in one way, shape, or form. And in Abdu Muttalib's case, the moron with the underwear, it was the State Department who admittedly put him on the airplane. So probably the easiest way for people to understand things and take it down to a very, very low level is this... um, gunrunner thing that they had going on with Mexico because what they were doing was they were selling guns to the Mexican drug cartels and they were blaming the American citizens saying we were the ones that were doing it. So it just goes to show you no matter what level they're going to work, they want to work on, 
or work at. They're going to try. They're going to find a way to BS the American people so they can run their agenda through. And as far as I'm concerned, there's not a damn one. This this Republican debate and everything. There's not one of them up there other than Ron Paul, and I'm not a big Ron Paul supporter. But because they'll they'll just pop him in the head anyhow. There's none of them. Look, look at the jokes that we've got running for president. I wouldn't want these people running for dog catcher, but they're going to run them for president. That to me is disgusting. Well, of course they don't put up. First of all, they don't. Again, real people don't run for political office anymore. Back in the day, people used to want to get involved and they ran for political offices. They also had term limits. There was no such thing as career politicians. Okay. Yeah, go well and serve a couple of terms and get out. Go you got to take the money out of it. You want to stop a lot of this, the rot of the problems and a lot of this crap that's going on? Take the money out of politics. Make it like it was when the founding fathers created this country. You served for a certain amount of time and that was it. You didn't get an illustrious uh, amount of money either. You got a small stipend, if that. Okay, it was considered their duty because they knew they had more money. They didn't. They had enough. They were well to do that. They didn't have to worry about living or living a nice lifestyle. So they considered it their duty to govern and that's what we need to do that's that's the kind of we, we need to bring things back to the way it used to be ladies and gentlemen we are out of time for this monday edition of wtf thank you for listening we will see you again next week you can listen to all the hosts here respectively on their own shows and uh bob is also heard over on oracle broadcasting feel free to check out the shows and host section on OrionTalkRadio.com I will see you all again Wednesday night Ken, Jules, Bob thank you for hanging out ladies and gentlemen we are out and Bob's going to get ejected <laughs>